Welcome to Electron Line. On our second stop to find these incredible places where life can be found, well, we're still on the Antarctic Peninsula, or we're still, it's an island, a big island, it's a continent, whatever you want to call it. In Antarctica, near the coast of Antarctica, there's this lake called Lake Vida. Now, Vida is the name of a sled dog that worked there a little over 100 years ago. They must have really liked the dog because they named the lake after that dog. The lake is about, mm, about five miles long. It's kind of a skinny lake. It's typically all dry around it. It's one of the driest places on Earth. It only receives about 10 centimeters of snow, which is a fraction of an inch of equivalent water um, in that particular area. But it's enough to slowly feed the lake over time because the glaciers around there, they slowly melt a little bit every summer. The water runs into the lake. It has no way out. So the water has become extremely salty. The salt within the lake is about seven times the amount of salt that we would find in the oceans. That's kind of like some of the very salt lakes, like uh, the big uh, salt lake near Salt Lake City has about the same amount of salt in that lake. So it's a very, very salty lake. But in this case, the lake is completely covered in ice, believe it or not, with all that salt. And the ice is about 20 meters thick, about 60, 70 feet thick. And so there's no place where any water is exposed to the outside. Barely any sunlight makes it through that 20 meters of ice. So it's very, very dark in there. It's very salty, salty water. And the temperature of the water is about minus 10 degrees Celsius. So it can be that low because it's so salty. The temperature above on the air is on average about minus 30 degrees Celsius. So it's a very cold place. And uh, the lake water is very high in nitrous oxide. There's no oxygen in the lake. So would you expect to find life in that lake? And again, they drill holes to the lake, they pull out what's underneath, and they do, they do find life. Also, they found life frozen in the ice, and they determined that that life had been frozen there for over 2,000 years, nearly 3,000 years. They thawed it, and guess what? It came back to life because it was completely frozen. It began to grow and it began to reproduce. So it's amazing that after thousands of years of being in a frozen state, you can defrost it and it comes back to life. It's quite, quite an amazing thing. So they call this kind of life hellophiles because it really loves salty conditions. That's the name associated with life that survives in extremely salty conditions. Primarily, they found filamentous cyanobacteria. So what that is, that is bacteria that actually manufactures its own food through what we call nitrogen fixing. It can actually take nitrogen, which is basically inert, and they convert that nitrogen into ammonia, nitrates, and nitrites, which are then usable for food. And so that's how it creates its own food. So the microbes were found in a frozen state for what they estimate to be 2,800 years. And once they thought it, it actually came back to life. It reanimated, it grew, it reproduced, it moved, it was amazing. And so yes, again, would you find life in a condition like that? No, you would not. But yet there it is, very improbable, but it seems like there's almost no place on earth we can go where life doesn't exist. And there again, it's a perfect example of such a place. It's probably not as improbable as Lake Vostok, but still you would not expect to find something there after all those years being in a frozen state and that's <laughs> that's another form of life but it's got four legs and a tail anyway it would survive one second it would survive one second in that lake <laughs> that's correct all right so do they find life there different than like yes it's a very different kind of life that they find in lake vostok yeah because it has to be under those conditions with all that salt, you have to have a different kind of organism that survives there. Would that, wouldn't Europe, Europa be that? That's a good question. Is Europa more like that? Then the answer would probably be yes. We expect a very briny, salty condition in Europa. And because of that, you would be looking for the same kind of life. Life that can produce its own food from the gases and materials that are there. Lake Vostok? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that, again, it, you know, who knows? It's on another moon, away from the Earth. Who knows what kind of life we would find there? But what this exercise does, it shows that under the most extreme conditions, we still find life forms on the Earth. 
and we haven't seen all of it yet. There's still some that we're going to talk about that are absolutely, in my mind, incredible that life would exist in those places.